after lives. Juliet leverages her 15 years of IT management, leadership, operations, strategic planning, and business development experience gained through her time at Barclays Bank Uganda Limited, Huawei Technologies, uh, MTN, IT Share Services, and then Brack Uganda Bank and Imagine Me Africa to help entrepreneurs identify various ways to leverage innovation as a key driver for entrepreneurship to solve problems and strive for excellence. Uh, she has a rich experience working with diverse teams, traversing various sectors on short and long-term consulting, uh, business development projects and strategy and management for emerging markets. She loves to coach individuals and organizations on how to dream big and achieve these goals. Juliet is very passionate about ensuring that Africa-led ventures are creating spaces for entrepreneurs uh, to thrive and build scalable businesses that create more jobs for Africans. So Juliet has a rich CV as you have heard and she's here with us to speak to us. I'm just going to commit her to the Lord even as she comes in. Our Father and our Lord, we want to thank you for another opportunity, Lord, to hear from you, to listen from you, O oh God. We want to surrender your servant, Juliet, into thy hands. Father, even as she brings, as she shares with us this, um, what you have for us, as she shares in the topic of harnessing the power of networking with like-minded organizations under this noble mountain. Father, we commit her into your hands. Lord, may you increase even as she decreases. Father, we pray for a good network even as she shares. And Father, may you direct her in your ways. We thank you, my Lord. We give you praise. For I have prayed all this with thanksgiving. And in Jesus' name. Amen. Mm -hmm. Juliet, you are, you are welcome to take us on. Good morning. Thank you so much, Rosaline. Um, I hope I will be able to share something here. Good morning, everyone. Um, it's an honor and a privilege uh, to be on the call. I would be able, I, I saw a couple of people saying earlier on they were not able to hear my sister. I hope you're able to hear me. And if you can't, uh, probably just raise your hand or emoji and then I'll be able to adjust accordingly. Thank you so much for the opportunity to share on harnessing the power of networking with like-minded organizations. I've already been introduced and um, I, I'll just share probably uh, on this topic, just looking back to the work that we do in Synapse and what I currently serve in. I've been telling people right now, I call myself the chief encouragement officer at Synapse. That's um, the short form of CEO in my space. And while I'm there, we are just making sure Synapse, I'm supporting a team of people that help entrepreneurs blend intensive training and advisory services regarding businesses, regarding entrepreneurship with biblical truth and access to capital. All we are doing is to make sure that uh, every other person aspiring to start a business or every person that is already in business has an opportunity or is equipped to learn how to scale their businesses 
while making social and spiritual impact. That is basically what we do. So when you see acceleration, when you see advisory training, a global network, the core there is aligned to biblical principles at the end of the day to make sure that um, we are able to scale. Um, and uh, I am going to speak from that angle, just coming out of what I have observed when it comes to harnessing uh, networks with like-minded people. That is just a brief of what I get to do. I decided, uh, the, the trainer, the facilitator, the encourager in me decided to start off by just defining a key, a few key issues there in that topic when they talk about harnessing, what does that look like? So um, I just picked a couple of uh, English words there to say, you know, when they say you're harnessing or to harness, you're getting in control, you're putting together something, you know, you're putting in order so that you can use its power. You're bringing um, something to effective use. And some of the words I saw later on um, that are similar, we are control, making use of, exploiting, putting to use. And I hope they will also help us in just understanding this topic. And then I later went on to also look at networking. In our space, how do we look at networking? Um, and we said that networking for us is being able uh, to establish and maintain lines of communication with people. Uh, today, as told, um, I mean, earlier on, I was, in, uh, I was advised that we are going to be talking about the media uh, mountain and it's full of communication it's full of awareness and engaging so how do we maintain how do we establish lines of communication with people uh, but most importantly I have in my session today I'm not just going to talk about any form of networking the networks that actually are worth harnessing need to be strategic networks. So you will find that much as there is general networking, today I'm going to be talking about the power of, uh, of strategic relationships, strategic networking, strategic collaboration, strategic partnerships um, among Christian business owners or even individuals. And for me, when I think about that, I'm thinking about connecting with people and a, uh, an opportunity for each one of us to connect with people in order to yeah. share information, first of all, in order to share resources, in order to share ideas, but also be able to share leads. And the emphasis I want to put there is on relationship building. Mm -hmm. You need to mm -hmm. have an opportunity to get to know people, find, find out how you can help them, and what they can do for you. That is strategic networking. And that's what I will be talking about. However, you can see on my slide, I also highlighted a little bit on something that I've observed um, on this mountain that I'll be representing today. And something I observe in the business space. Something that we, I think, need to focus on, not only pray about and fast about, but also be able to practically work to eliminate and that is parasitic networking or parasitic associations and many of you will ask what are those kind of associations I didn't put a definition there but I want to use a few examples of parasites um, and, and just to draw a picture I usually say many of you have heard about tapeworms you've heard about fleas you've heard about barnacles Tapeworms are segmented flatworms that attach themselves to the inside of the intestines of animals. They are usually found in cows, in pigs, and even sometimes in humans. And what they do, they get food by eating their host's digested food. They deprive the host of all nutrients. So I want you to start imagining those kind of associations and networks and uh, start looking through especially this mountain I think they will become a prayer point for us as we go on because they are not good networks and we are not going to focus our minds this this uh, morning to even leverage on them 
So why do we get to harness or leverage on networking? I think this is the key of why I was invited and what the core of my talking is going to be based on. I literally just looked and I said, if they say that networking and collaboration is among the first four C's of the 21st century skills, then it's worth our attention this morning. The first one being the ability to find solutions to problems, which I think many of us are leveraging on, the ability to think outside the box. These days we say not even thinking outside, sometimes even within or not even, you know, coming outside the box or whatsoever, which is creativity. And then number three, the networking, the collaboration, an opportunity to work with others. It is a key element if you're going to be a person thriving in the 21st century and above. And then finally, communication, conveying ideas, which is a key area of our media mountain as we speak today. So I just want us to reflect a bit. Many times when I'm talking, many, many times when I'm training, many times when I'm speaking to a team of people, I love to let us reflect. I want us to reflect a bit. And as I speak about these things, I want you to think about the types of networks you have been engaged in or you've created over the period of time or you have harnessed, like we are saying today, you've been able to build or you observe around you. Personally, I get to see around three types of networks and each of them have their pros and cons, but many times we need to be cautious about what networks are we even leveraging on. I'll just highlight a bit of those um, using this particular picture to bring that out. There are networks that we call seasonal networks. And uh, if you don't know the kind of networks you need to create, then you struggle in getting the advantage out of them. So we have seasonal networks and um, many times seasonal networks come for, for a particular purpose. But like you hear seasonal, they are for a season. An example of seasonal networks I love to talk about is networks that you picked in probably class. Some of us were classmates, we are OGs and OBs of a particular cohort, a particular class. I hear class of 2004, class of 2012, class of whatever, whatever your class is. That was a seasonal network. It was cohort-based, it was time-based, for a particular period of time. And that can work to your advantage or to your disadvantage. And then we have what we call general net networks. You know, general networks, these ones we have every day. You walk onto a, uh, as you're coming from home, along the road, um, in your office, wherever you are you will definitely have this form of networks. Like these people, you get into a boardroom because of a certain item, you find that you're in that particular network. And then thirdly, uh, this is a particular type of network I love many times for us to also focus on, especially people who are in business. We call them the destiny and covenant networks. These are the strongest form of networks that many times we need to be able to pursue. Strongest because they are bound by certain oaths and they are usually not affected by emotions. You don't, you will not have this, this kind of uh, feeling like you had for a class network, a class cohort network. Oh, that time we were young and A, B, C, and D, and then you participate that way. And the reason I want us to focus on this will be later on as we get to know how we even need to uh, operate on this mountain when it comes to leveraging and harnessing networks. One of the things I have highlighted there, something I had my mentor say, he said networks are the number one unwritten rule for success or of success in business. If you have not been, if you're not in a space where your everyday life or your everyday lifestyle is drawing you towards any form of networking or network, then there is a challenge. Now, talking about that, I wanted to bring it to context and share what networking is not. 
we are going to be talking about how we can leverage networks. But I want us to understand what networking is not. And I've just highlighted a couple of things here for us to be clear. When we say we are leveraging on networking, we are not talking about you asking for a business card or sharing it with something or someone. We are not talking about you going to some conference, having a good meal and meeting a couple of people. I'm not talking about you tagging people in your post on a certain LinkedIn page. I'm not talking about you asking some people to be your mentors because they are in particular spaces. That is not networking. And that's not the type of networking we are going to be leveraging on and learning to harness. I'm not talking about this kind of networking uh, where we advertise our businesses to the peers. Many times we're on calls like this and they say it's networking time. And then all we do is go and say, oh, this is Julie Sinapis and everything. That is not the kind of networking I'm going to talk about today. It's not about collecting contacts that you, you, know, you find in different places. It's not about the people you know. But many times the people that know you, like you, and trust you. So I wanted us to have at the back of our minds what networking is and what it's not so that we can know what we are going to leverage on or harness. We are not talking about you being able to take a selfie at a, an event and then say, oh, I stood next to so-and-so. This is not the networking we are going to talk about. Why then talk about networking for us who are kingdom business entrepreneurs? I've highlighted just a few things here. I know in your spaces, networking highlights many things. It has so many benefits. But I want you to walk with me and just look at each of those circles. And then in your free time or even while we are on this call, you're just going to identify your top three benefits from all your years and experience of networking as either kingdom entrepreneur or as an individual. I want to just talk about a couple of these elements as we go on uh, for us to understand why it's key for us to leverage on, on this thing called networking. And I'll start with the growth currency. Uh, where I say that networking is a growth currency. If you want to grow, like I said earlier, it's your number one unwritten rule for business success. Before we talk about access to capital, before we talk about anything, including you getting your product on the market, you realize that you need to be able to leverage on this thing called networking. And that's why I call it a growth currency. Like it's, it's, it's a currency that you need. Lack of collaborations and networks, I have heard people say, is the greatest form of poverty. Now, some of us might know people who are poor and you are wondering, is that why they are poor? But this is what we get to understand, even in the media mountain space, that when you're not able to collaborate, you are not able to communicate, number one, and that can actually be an issue of lack of creativity and the greatest form of of, of uh, poverty. I wanted to highlight, there's a scripture I, I usually read, um, and for many of us who are on the call, we could try and open it up. Genesis 12, 4. Uh, that scripture says that, so Abraham departed as the Lord had directed him, and Lot went with him. I have always wondered, God did not call uh, Lot. He only called Abraham. But this scripture tells us that Lot went with him. Are we seeing something there? Lot knew where the gist of his next steps and his next life was. He did not decide to do things by himself and everything. He had to go with a person who had something that he needed. And the Bible there tells us that, you know, as he went with him, of course, later we read, he actually you know, began to excel and all that. But mind you, he was not called. Networks are purchases of investments in many spaces. In fact, when we are teaching in business, we say it's such a great investment and they position many of us across network, uh, across continents. They help us exchange many, many 
products. No wonder Amos 3.3 says, can two walk together unless they agree? Can you exchange? Can you transact unless you agree? Are you able to go to the next step unless you leverage on the potential of other people? So I am literally not going to go in the details of each of these areas. As you can see, we talk about an eternal mindset, how networking is actually a requirement from the Bible. It's something that the Bible talks about. It's something that we are going to find out as we talk about strategic relationships and strategic network, how we ought to create value in that space. But like I said, I would love for you in your free time to think about of all these benefits, what are your top three and what are your next critical ones that you're going to be able to talk about? I want, like I said, I'm going to focus a lot on strategic networks. And there are a couple of things I'm going to highlight as I talk about strategic networks. I don't have a lot of time, but you will work with me as you look at each of the scriptures I've highlighted here. These are a few of the scriptures that for me bring out the aspect of the need for us to harness networking and harness uh, and build networks with like-minded people, how important it becomes for us, even as we go along with probably our careers, our businesses, and at the end of the day, being able to fulfill the mandate that God has blessed unto us. I love the story in John 5, uh, that is uh, 1 to 7. We all know that's the story of the healing at the pool. Um, somewhere when you read that scripture, there's something that usually strikes me uh, when Jesus uh, had gone and, you know, when uh, at, at the end of the day, he was asking that that gentleman and he asked him, do you want to be do, do you want to be healed? And the man said, I have no man to speak for me. And the question is, I and, and as I share this, I just want again for us to reflect. This comment says, I have no man to speak for me. He did not say, I have no skill, I have no strength, I have no cash. He said he had no man. No man can, you know, no man. And this, this when you read this story, 38 years of stagnation, of sickness, and he said he had no man. We need to think twice, even in the spaces that we are in. Are you the type that has no man, has no space, has no, no, no person, no organization, no individual, no group of people coming to your rescue? I don't know if yours are also 38 years, but this was the problem. You know, God is asking, Jesus is asking, do you want to be healed? And it was a total lack of networks, a total lack of people to come through. Uh, the next uh, story we read there is in Mark 2. This is my favorite. Uh, when I talk about networks, uh, the crippled man and his friends. And and for me, I say this this level of networking and love and care, you know, is the one that is going to make a mountain or make our experiences in business much lighter and even better. It's the best way of even leveraging or showcasing why we need to focus on networks. The friends to this guy, the, crip, the friends to the crippled man, what strikes me is that they did not care what would happen. These are guys said, we are going to tear the roof on behalf of our friend. And for me, the question I'm asking right now, you could be in business, you could be at your workplace, probably in the home, let's bring it down, wherever you are. Do you have a team of people? Do you have a, 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 a surrounding, an environment around you where we have these kind of friends who are saying, we don't care, you have to receive your healing. If it means pulling you through that the rooftop, we shall do it. Not friends who say, wait a minute, Jesus is still having some, some healing uh, kind of uh, um, session. When he's done, we will wait here at the door and probably ask the disciples if he's not so tired to also look at you. People who are saying while he's in there, that is where we are going to take you. And I, many times I say this is where unbelievers actually hit us hands down. We haven't learned the value of excellence, 
the value of strategic relationships like this. And investing in these quality destiny defining relationships is quite an ad for us as we create awareness, as we create communication, as we create content, as we get into spaces of even running thriving businesses. The other story I love to engage on strategic relationships is that story of uh, Mary being visited by Gabriel and uh, uh, being told about what was going to come. But the most interesting thing I actually get to think about there is the, the kind of, you know, God showcases networking at another level. Before even Gabriel comes, before all that, uh, ha, you know, you pay attention and look at all the prophets that worked to get this message across. Hmm? If you go back, you're looking, and for me, many times I'm just looking at all these stories of, of networking, Simon of Sarin, Joseph of, of uh, Rathmea, you know, uh, many times I'm, I'm thinking, do you guys know who has the owner of the donkey? that carried Jesus into the triumphant entry. Sometimes I'm reading the Bible and I'm thinking about all these opportunities for networking. Think about the young man's lunch pack. Hmm? You know, Jesus needed men. He worked with men. He worked with networks. He worked with a group of people here on earth as he performed all this. And no wonder they tell us that all blessings come from God through men. The answer to your prayer, I highlighted that for a moment. The answer to your prayer left heaven a long time ago. One, I had this one time from a preacher when he was reminding us even how to discern. He said, your answer to that prayer left heaven a long time ago. But guess what? It's currently placed in the hands of certain men that we get to call destiny helpers, destiny carriers, destiny communicators, whatever they are. It is currently held with those men. And every time we push ourselves away from this kind of networks, we are pulling ourselves out of this space, out of the knowledge that actually gets us to triumph. And my challenge today is for us to go back and look at some of these spaces to go back and say, where have I failed in this space? We will just look at a sort analysis, especially when it comes to the media space. And for me, I talked about this. Yes, there are, there are times uh, as they were reading my, my, my bio, there are moments I worked with these institutions and I saw a couple of things and systems on how many times they get to leverage on this. They are passionate about causes. They are passionate about sports, arts, education, and all the other mountains, but they usually do a sort of analysis that helps them be able to leverage on multiple networks and excel. Their questions are highlighted there. They are always asking who on our team, who in our sector can do this better? Who in our network can do it better? What makes the market attractive to us? And one of the things they've always said, they don't want to reinvent the wheel. They never want to reinvent the wheel. And that's the question I'm going to ask. Are there opportunities? Have there been spaces where you felt like you are reinventing the wheel? You don't have to. You just have to create awareness. You just have to create awareness. I'm just going to share a story um, as I conclude today on the importance of leveraging on networks using the Synapse story. One of the things that we keep talking about at Synapse, like I told you earlier, is that we never want to reinvent the wheel. And why? Because it's a wheel anyway. You're not going to change much about it. But the biggest item that we've come to identify in that is that there is nothing new under the sun. Whatever we are doing, someone has done most probably done before and done in a better way or someone is yet to do better. And that has drawn us in the space of being able to network. It's For us, it's about connecting people with people 
and people with ideas and people with opportunities. I highlighted just a few. We have so many other networks we've leveraged on, but I just highlighted just a few of the people that we are working with in the work that we are doing. And I call them destiny helpers. These are people that have come our way to help us equip men and women, empower them to their God assigned um, roles, but also to help us be able to fulfill their destinies, especially in the spaces of discipleship, because our mission is to make disciples and alleviate poverty. So much as we have a great curriculum, well proven, tested and tried, one of the things we say, we can't do it alone. And what is happening in these spaces? We have networked with a couple of these people. We come to, Zinapi, to, uh, to Ziwani and we are saying, you know, they are interested in purpose beyond profit. So as we are teaching people to align their businesses on uh, biblical truths, we have an opportunity of people who, a community of people who are coming to teach, to inspire. They have Christian resources. They are doing uh, trainings. They are, they are, they are, they are helping leaders across Africa. We could just be in a few countries, but they are across Africa. And as we network with them, as we work with them, we are helping the rest of the entrepreneurs live out their calling in the marketplace across the African content, continent. Would we have done that on our own? Probably yes, but maybe we would have taken a longer period of time. Would Synapis have done that on their own? Probably yes, but maybe not to the excellence of two working together. And this is what I want to encourage many of us, either you're in business or you're just an individual. There's a lot to leverage on when you get into some of these spaces. There's a lot to work on. There's a lot to see as you work with a different people. They, when we talk about discipleship, one of the things we've been able to look at is for us is how do we build trust? How do we build? Because trust is a key component of relationship building. How do we integrate this? How can we connect our entrepreneurs to be able to be cared for? And many times we are working with faith-driven entrepreneurs. We are working with CBMC. We are working with Compassion to make sure that, you know, we provide a range of offerings that can help these entrepreneurs be able to have the right foundations uh, for their businesses. And as they are doing that, they are being given tools for kingdom businesses. They are being given advisory. They are being given um, uh, opportunities for coaching. We've had Faith Driven provide great series, encouraging series uh, on, on how to actually run a business from a, a faith perspective. We've had uh, so many organizations come through and their focus is having monthly prayer uh, sessions that serve entrepreneurs. Many times people are running business and they don't know that prayer is a core item. You know, how can we disciple business owners? That is an approach that we have come with. And I hope even as we think through the many areas of our businesses, the many areas of this mountain, we'll be able to know why it is important for us at the end of the day to leverage on networks. I just want to highlight that networking has to be built on an angle of being sustainable. Sustainable, it's not a one-off you need to know your why. Number one, why am I going into this space? Why am I bringing so on? So remember I said it's not about collecting contacts. Why am I getting into this space? Determine your goal for networking. Do not get into a network space because you saw a flyer. One of the things that we usually say, the greatest approach that is going to help you is the VVS. Look at the values, look at your vision, and then the skills you have to offer. If you go into a networking space and each of those three is not utilized, many times pull back and evaluate. Is it speaking to my values? Is it speaking to my skills? Is it speaking to the skills those people have to offer? Is it aligned to my vision? And if that is something that you find, then get into that space and make the best out of it. Offer value in the networks. Discern who the destiny connectors are. Be patient as you build these networks at the end of the day and always look out for opportunity. I want to conclude by 
inviting us on a couple of things, knowing that networks are not built in crowds. I want to emphasize this. They are not built in crowds. You have to focus, first of all, in those little spaces that you're in. And remember that all blessings come from God to men through men. That is the reason you have to network. As you network, avoid networks of FF. I highlight them there. Food, fun, and fame. Those are not great networks. We'll talk about that on another day. Networking is not a gift. It's an investment. Make time. Make time. Work hard at it. It will be costly. It will be painful. But it's profitable once you pursue it rightly. Not investing in God's people is not investing in God himself. So if you're saying, me, I'm an introvert, I don't want to, ne to network, I find it hard, you're not investing in God. Just let that sink in. There is no need in building a network that you're not going to use or sustain. So think twice as you get into your networking spaces. And finally, remember the five C's of networking. Work on your character, be courageous, consistently pursue networking and ensure that you have cut, uh, cutting edge expertise, a skill, and as well as conviction to be a part of the networks. I will hand over to my colleague, um, I think Ros Rosary. Uh, thank you so much for listening in. I'll take questions. I'll take comments. I have a couple of uh, other um, discussion points that we'll take on later on. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Juliet. You, I tell you, I would say we need more time. <laughs> yeah, it, in my in my view, it was really uh, so much flowing. Thank you very much for making networking seem very, very practical. Yeah, some people have pick, picked the FFF, hmm? fun, food, and fame. So I think that's what we call networking. We happen and we go every place uh, with every group. Thank you again, once again. Um, we are going to do the group discussion, like the questions that you already have. I don't know how you can send me a copy or you will help uh, um, um, screen share. But before that happens, probably you can give one or two people to give their comments uh, and remarks uh, before we do the discussions. Uh, two people, please feel free. You can raise your hand or write in the chat. I've seen already some people in the chat giving their compliments. Uh, thank you so much, Juliet, from Oliver to Musabe. Professor Grace Okello says, thanks, Juliet. Wonderful presentation. Juliet, thank you, thank you, thank you. FFF. Okay, thank you so much. VVS, wonderful. I don't know what that is. VVS is what? Very, very what? Thank you so much, Julie. This is very useful and helpful. Thank you, Coach Julie from Phoebe. So, yes, Robina. Kindly go ahead, uh, then uh, uh, Ruth will follow after you. Just use a minute, not more, to okay. make a remark. Okay. Okay, thank you, Pastor Anthony. And yeah. I just want to convey my gratitude to Julie, to, to no, is it Julie? Juliet. Um, yes. Okay, to the presenter. Yes, Juliet. I am... <laughs> I'm lost for words, but uh, I, I believe this is what we should do as believers, but we are usually uh, not good at working together. I've actually attended another training where they say, where someone made a comment and said, you know, believers can hardly work together. We are always pulling at each other, but we are family. Well, I don't know. I, I think there is also sibling rivalry in the kingdom of God, but we need to do something about it because many times we are reinventing wheels even in the same congregation maybe there is already a ministry that is running and someone is coming up with the same same ministry just parallel to the one that is already uh, working so if we can learn how to work together and I, 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 I just I'm just so thankful to understand uh, networking in I think in the kingdom way 
because I think I had it all wrong, you know, thinking it's all about fun, you know, you have so many people at your disposal, but you can hardly make good use of them. Yet the, our answers for sure are already with us. They left heaven a long time ago, but our relationships are so poor. May God help us. And Wow, thank you, Robina. That's very clear. The picked it. Again, thank you, Juliet. Ruth, carry on, please. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Anthony. Thank you, Juliet. You have just dismantled my definition for networking that I've had for all these years. It is not collecting cards, it is not saying hello to everyone. It is more than that. So Pastor Anthony, please let's have a follow-on to really understand. Because mm -hmm. for a good majority of us, it was what the, the things she said it is not, is what we, we thought it is. So could we have, I'm requesting for an, an, a follow-on on this one to get this thing deeper and help us do it better and right to have very meaningful results in our businesses and everything that we do. Thank you very much. All right, uh, Juliet, you have had Someone needs a little follow-up. I don't know how available you are. Uh, Midweek would we'll do and uh, put her. Oh, she will be happy to do this. So um, 6 a.m. on Wednesday, we can just do a follow-up on this one, especially talk about what networking is not, so that we undo all the things that we did. Thank you very much, Ruth, for that request. And uh, Juliet says, yes, she will be happy to do that. Okay, I think that's about the time we are going to do our discussions. Um, uh, Juliet, you are a co-host, so you would share screen to breakout rooms. I'm, I'm just cre creating some breakout rooms uh, so that people are able to see them in the rooms that they are in. Uh, please uh, discuss as much as you can. Uh, we are just going to have a number of groups so that the people are fewer and everyone has a chance. Uh, in the little time that we have here. What we usually do is everyone can pick a question uh, so that uh, every question is looked at in the time that you have. If there is more questions than people, then you go ahead, you look through uh, another question. It's very important that way so that a bit of everything is addressed. So there are 10 groups. If you're five in there or three, it's well. We only have four groups, so just maximize that time. See a prompt on your screen, just join already. See you after 15 minutes. Okay, no, I didn't set up to the time, sorry. It's gonna be 15 minutes. Yes, so we can move and then come back here a few minutes later. Juliet, you might need to stay in, in the main room so that you share that uh, screen to the breakout rooms. Okay, I'll do so. Thank you. At this point in the main room, you should see a prompt on your screen that asks you to join a room for discussion. Please pick on it 
and join the rest. Discussions already began. Uh, I've, also, I've also sent you the. Oh, the you have. Yeah, on okay. in yeah, just in case anyone says they are not able to pick them. You, you said on, on WhatsApp. No, no, no. I sent. Should I send on WhatsApp? Okay. But if it's an email, it's even better. Uh, let me send on WhatsApp. I think okay. I had sent them on uh, the general line. Okay. Um, just a second. Yeah. So. You know, I think some are already waiting for the questions in the rooms. Yeah. So, could I? I could broadcast that. Yes, yeah, you, you you broadcast. Yeah, don't you? You broadcast to the breakout rooms. Mm -hmm. Just a second. I just broadcast as I sort you out. Do the breakout rooms, and then broadcast. I just did that and then I come and send you this presentation here. Did you see any question come through? Yeah, I see some, like you, like you tap them. Oh, which is, yes, I see what are some of the misconceptions. I see some on the, the bar up. Mm -hmm. I, I thought you would share on the page as it, as it was. Mm -hmm. For some reason, I think I'm not able to. Okay, just share with me on WhatsApp. No, wait a minute. Oh, this one is just a little screenshot. It's it is not uh not what it was to be the resolution will be. If we just go to that slide that has the question and I can convert it to PDF it has by point. So do I send you the slide? Yeah, please do. I don't know why I keep attaching it, but um for some reason. It's not attaching. Let me copy that again and see. Attach file. Um, let me send the entire PowerPoint okay. and then you no, no problem. Then I can retrieve that, that, that slide. The challenge is that it's quite big. Oh, it's heavy. Mm, it's quite heavy. Oh, we've lost some time. Sorry about that. So, uh,
Okay, let me check. See. On WhatsApp. Have... Let me be sharing the photo. You see that first. I hope it will be able to. Viewed wherever they are. Mm -hmm. we... Share. Okay. Are you able to see anything on the screen? Yeah, I can see. Sorry, I was on mute. I can see. Okay. And it's legible. So um I'll use that as I get that.
Right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back from the breakout rooms. Um, <clears throat> apologetic, we uh, had some mishaps. So that's the screen sharing came a little late. Uh, but if you notice, uh, there's a broadcast message that comes to your room that gives you more time, uh, rather a communication from the main room. So I was starting. I was adding those minutes and I was like, you have another five added minutes to compensate. I think some of you missed it. But yes, uh, that's what we had time for today. Juliet has agreed and has entered it into our calendar that she'll be back here on Wednesday, 6.30 a.m. Just for this session. Yes, just for this session and to have more Q&A uh from 6 30 to 7 45 so we shall give out the entire 45 minutes just to talk through this and then you do q and a well, we won't have breakout rooms on that day right so uh until that time we pr i pray you'll be here uh, i think it's one of the most most important topics that we have looked at today thank you i will now ask um mr francis nero to give us a closing remarks and a closing prayer Thank you so much, Anthony. Uh, thank you, our sister Juliet, for such very uh, informative discussion on networking. And uh, I've just been thinking through all the resources that we so far have received from this AKBF sessions. And the question that has been lingering in my mind is, what are we doing with them at a personal level? or are we accumulating knowledge? <clears throat> uh, so let's pray and believe that uh, these practical things, principles, and that, that Juliet has shared with us, we will take it to another level, especially that we are looking forward to Wednesday when we'll engage more in Q&A. Mm -hmm. Our Father and our God, thank you. Thank you so much for your mercies. Thank you for this day. Thank you for your faithfulness in that you have taught us over the last coming to two years now, uh, very uh, but profound principles of life and dizziness and principles that will enable us and equip us to execute our mandate here on the earth as agents of the kingdom of heaven. Thank you. Thank you for particularly uh, Sister Julie Kasita and the depth of understanding the width of experience and knowledge that you've entrusted to her and she's helping us and equipping us and causing us to shift our thinking and our mindset, our conceptions, perceptions, especially of uh, networking. Thank you. Thank you for this session we've had. Lord, we ask that this word, this counsel, this guide, rebuke, correction that has come through, Lord, will not land on hard rock. Mm. Neither will it land on uh, bushy, thorny grounds. Neither will mm. it land on the wayside. Mm. We pray that our hearts will be as the fertile ground on which the mm. seed, the sower falls and it keeps it and nurtures it and Sorry. incubates it as it were until it begins to sprout and bear fruit. So we pray in the name of Jesus that these words will cause, will bear fruit in us as we take responsibility at personal levels to keep them and ponder over them, meditate over them and listen into you more so that we might find our own placing in regards mm. to particularly networking. We thank you, mm. our Father, and bless you. We commit ourselves to you and we commit this week, uh, particularly the continuation on Wednesday, we commit it to you. We pray that yes. your presence will continue to abide with us and that you will guide us with your eyes and lead us with your hand. Let your instruction, 
let your law, your word, lighten our path as we go right. about the assignment that we have to execute this week. We thank you yeah. and bless you, Father. In Jesus' yeah. name we pray. Amen. 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 Before I conclude, allow me Amen. remind you. Allow me remind you about Africa House of Prayer Conference coming very soon, uh, 18 to 23rd March. Uh, some of you have not yet registered. Please make registration. Register quickly because uh, time is running out so that we can, uh, we can ease our planning. Thank you so much, every one of you. You're welcome to Africa House of Prayer. God bless you. Mm. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Lord Christ. Jesus Christ. And the love of God. And the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Be with us all forevermore. forevermore. Amen. See you Wednesday, 6.30 a.m. Act 6 from prayer and then we'll do this. God bless you. Thank you for coming today. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you too.